All right. What is up, everybody? It's a new episode here of Queen City Reds here with Paul for the second week in a row. Paul, what's uh, happening? How are you on this beautiful Monday? I'm pretty good, Greg. Pretty good. Thanks for having me again. How are you? Absolutely. Um, we are going to start out. Usually we're going to recap um, the previous week um, to start off with, but some breaking news here for the Reds today. And of course, it's bad news because that's all that happens here with the Reds. Um, TJ Friedel on the IL. Um, once I heard hamstring the other day, I was pretty concerned. Um, I was pretty surprised he came back um, so Same. quickly, but clearly, clearly he wasn't right. Um, anytime you hear hamstring, it's usually a couple weeks uh, minimum. Um, just your thoughts on TJ Friedel as a whole going to the IL. Obviously, he's a huge part of this Reds team. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what his third time now this year. So, third time, yeah. yeah, yeah, third time already, and we're not even into July yet. That's that's tough. I mean, you know, we noticed the first time when he came back how much of an Im- impact he made. So losing him again is just – it's really frustrating. We've had a lot of injuries this year and to key guys, so it's really frustrating, especially, you know, Friedel, offense, defense, he brings a lot to the table. Yeah, it's brutal, man. I mean, he just seems to be a guy that his stats may not be, like, overwhelming, Mm -hmm. but he just seems when he's in the lineup, you feel good about the leadoff spot. You feel good that he can put a good at bat up there and um, he can steal base when he needs to. He's great defensively. Um, Mm -hmm. But then again, the way he plays, like, you start to ask yourself, and he plays so violently and, you know, wants to get every ball and um, he's just going to have injuries. Um, and that's kind of stinks. Um, I know people say maybe turn it, turn the page back a little bit and don't play so hard, but I don't, I think that's easy to say, but you, when you play one way your whole life, I don't know how you change it up. But yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Now you look, I just, I just tweeted out a little bit ago. I said, you know, every day when the Reds lose, I get, I get pretty mad. <laughs> and then I think <laughs> like TJ Friedel has barely played. CES barely played. Matt McClain has not played at all. Noel B. Marte has not played at all. Like you're talking four guys right there who are supposed to be everyday players in the lineup and you're right. playing without. And I, I know people are saying all oh, it's excuses, excuses. Like that's four of your main stays in the lineup that you're playing without. Yeah. And it's just, it's just brutal. I mean, it, it's brutal. I think the Reds are two games out of a playoff spot, maybe a game and a half, which is amazing in itself. I think it's it just really is how bad the NL is, but it's been a crazy stretch. It seems like every day um, there's some kind of breaking news, and it's it's always bad news. There's never good news. Um, yeah. Our guy Marte is about to come back, and he's hitting like 100 in AAA. So we'll talk about that a little later. But anything yeah. else on Frito before we sort of get into the last week? No, just I just wanted to get your thoughts um, just because you are so in, big in the um, minor leagues. What What's up with Levi Jordan? What do, you, what do we got about him? Yeah, man, it's funny. So I do minor league uh, game updates every every night. And right. for the first couple months, I'd see Levi Jordan on there. And I'm like, wow, he's hitting like 300. I'm like, Levi Jordan, he's never played in the majors. Like, he's 28, never played in the majors. Okay. Like, I'm like, this guy, he's not going to get called up. Like, he's yeah. not going to get called up. So I wouldn't even include him at the beginning of the year on the things because, like, people don't care what Levi Jordan's doing out there. Right. And then he just kept hitting. And I was like, <laughs> well, I got to start including this guy. I mean, I still don't think he's going to get called up, but he just keeps hitting. Um, so I started including him on the cap- recap, and he's been over 300 consistently all year. Um, wow. Not a guy that hits much for power, plays some infield, plays some outfield. Mm-hmm. I don't really know a ton about him. I know they got him in the Rule 5 minor league draft. Um I don't think Lefty he's a righty. I believe he's a right hand, right handed um, player. I'm almost positive. Okay. Um, but it's just, yeah, I mean, I don't think, yeah, he throws right, bats right. Um, 302, 827 OPS, only five okay. home runs, only six stolen bases. So not big power, not big speed. Uh-huh. Um, but he's, he, he'll give you a good at bat, I guess. I, I don't expect much from him, but right. I don't know. I mean, at this point, where I just need somebody to step up. Maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe you'll get two good weeks from a guy like that, and I don't know. It's going to be interesting because you're going to have Stu, um, <clears throat> Stu and Benson probably platooning in yeah. um, center field now, and I guess Levi Jordan will get get some playing time. Gets, I will say regardless of that. Yeah, and regardless of that, it's a cool story, right? Like right. they said in the offseason, he was thinking about becoming a coach, um, and wow. then he didn't give up, and now he's going to make his major league debut at twenty. That's awesome. Heck yeah. I mean, regardless, it's a it's a really cool story. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I hope the best. Maybe Levi Jordan will hit a bomb tonight. Yeah. For us and, uh, <laughs> um, it's cool. You know, there's always those top prospect lists, but it's all the cooler stories of the guys like this who never yeah. were on any top prospect lists. And he's 28 years old and he just earned his way. You know, yep. he forced the Reds to have to call him up. So yep. pretty cool story. That is cool. Um, all right. Well, a couple going into the last week, um, I guess the Reds had a two and four week um, lost, lost two out of three to the Pirates, um, lost two out of three to the Red Sox. Yeah. So just we won't get into every game, but you had game one, you had Paul Skeens against Carson Spires. I don't think anyone um, was really expecting to win that game. I no. take that back. I think some people on the X app were expecting to win that game based well. on the actions. <laughs> but um I mean, you just have Spires going against Skeens. I don't think you're going to win that game, and they did not. Spires settled in after sucking it um, in the first couple innings, after struggling mm-hmm. the first couple innings. But game two, you had Nicodolo pitch an absolute um, gem, barely one two one. Santiago Espinal saved the day, um, and then game three, you had Hunter Green throw a gem, and you lost one to zero. So, yeah, it feels like you, if you give up three runs in two games or two runs in two runs in two games, like you should probably win those games, but the Reds offense has just kind of been bad this year. So yeah. any thoughts on the pirate series as a whole? Just adding to that is it's been really frustrating because like beginning of the year obviously was awful offensively. And then they seemed like they were coming around pretty good. And then this last week, man, they were just not a, they back to where it was before. I felt like. Yeah, and that was one of the games Frida was out and you're trotting out. Yep. Um, you're trotting out. as Espinal's pretty good defensively. He shouldn't play a bunch against right-handed pitchers starting um, in the lineup, but he's having yep. to right now. Stu, you just don't know. He hasn't even been very good lately against lefties. I know he's ripping lefties on the year. Um, but, again, Stu, you're not sure what you're going to get against righties when he's up there late in the game against them. Um, Benson has been struggling. We'll get to that later. Fraley only hits singles. He has nine mm-hmm. RBIs in the season. It's just a bizarre. It's Herta a bizarre beast has been str- not very good offensively. Who's that? Herta beast. Oh yeah, and they sent him down now. So yeah, he's right. Yeah, it's it's been bad. I mean, it's been bad. It's like you look at the lineup tonight, and you're like, are are they going to score? The Reds might have to win three to two again. Maybe this will be the lineup that somehow scores seven. Because <laughs> God forbid the Reds just win like 10 to one game. But seriously, though, um, I don't know if the offense can score 10 runs. So, um, yeah, it doesn't those seem are... like it right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. I don't think I have anything more to add on the Pirates series. It's just, no. it's infuriating to get that good of pitching and not win yeah. games. To lose yeah. a game one to zero is just, just, it's just so frustrating. So then we go to the Red Sox. You win game one. You're feeling good. The Red Sox came in red hot, won five straight, seven of eight. You beat them game one. You have uh, Andrew Andrew Abbott pitch. Andrew Abbott, no, Frankie Montas pitched game two. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Montas pitched pretty well, had a 3 nothing lead, and blow a 3 nothing lead. Yep. Here's the play I want to get to um, oh. p- particularly. And then there's a couple other base running mistakes and fielding mistakes that I want to get to in game um, two. And the – they they lost they lose game three with Lodolo on the mound, but that's why game two was so important. Um, yeah. If you can get the first two, then you win the series. So game three is less important. And if Lodolo struggles for once, it's not that big of a deal. But we're talking, I think it was the eighth inning, ball hit down the left field line. Um, Duran for the um, where Red Sox is just um, one of the fastest guys in baseball. Yeah. Shallow fly ball. And Stu – Stu's he's been really good defensively this year. So I'll yeah. preface it with that. I don't know what he was doing. He catches the ball and he he throws a 19 hopper to home plate. It looked like he was just to me, honestly, what it looked like was he wasn't expecting the runner to go and he just kind of yep. casually threw it in. After yep. the game, he he explained that he couldn't see, he didn't know where home plate was, so he just kind of chucked it up there. I I I don't really buy that, but at the same time, like it's hard to take it's hard to take what guys say after the game and really say like, that's what he meant. He's just trying to like, kind of be like, he's trying to make an excuse almost instead yeah. of just saying like, I, I, I didn't have a grip on it or I didn't, you can't take a hundred percent what he's saying in that, in that. Right. But it right. was just, it was just a play that if he comes up firing and Duran's are so fast, then cool. But to see him right. just kind of like, chuck it in there at 16 mile per hour was just yeah, it was like he was just throwing it back period. in to get it in yeah exactly it so just 
Yeah, what are you? I guess what are your thoughts? Do you have the same thoughts I mean, as me on that? Or, so awesome. I didn't watch it live, but I saw it almost immediately because Twitter or X was all over it, obviously. And <clears throat> when I saw it, it, there was a play earlier this year, and I it was one of his first games, and I don't remember who it was, but it was a similar kind of play. He was in center ball, field, right? Yeah, he was in center, and the ball was hit out to him, and the guy I think scored from second. And he just kind of lobbed it in. It, it was he was like, on. He was on third. It was a sack fly. I think he thought was there was three outs. Too. I know exactly okay. the play you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. He, I and think he, he thought there were three outs because he caught it and kind of took a couple steps like he was going to run it in. Yeah. And, and then, then just threw it. yeah, never it's, threw it. It's like I, I guess to me, it's almost as if Sue, his awareness isn't the greatest out there in the outfield as what's going on in the rest of the game yeah, like and, a lap, lack of judge like a lapse of judgment or something yeah and, and like then on top of that of it kind of makes you wonder like back to like kind of some little league fundamentals type stuff is there communication going on you know like hey throw plays at home yeah you know? <laughs> like you catch yeah. it plays at home and yeah to, to just comment on his thing about throwing at home i know not to buy you know i agree with you 100 about not buying into what all they say but it was down the left field line and you're a major league baseball player you know where home plate is. home plate does not move yeah yeah home plate does not move that was (laughs) yeah that's what i'm saying sorry crazy he's just saying something he's just up there like rattled i don't know what to say i'm just gonna say (laughs) something because that makes no sense it literally makes no sense it's like yeah yeah, it's bizarre but I think the reason so mad is like plays like that with this team, they had a three, nothing lead they had in this. We'll go into the base running and fielding a little bit they had a three, nothing lead. You had um, earlier in the game, you had multiple guys get thrown out at home. You had, uh, which Jake Fraley got, he, he Jake Fraley got thrown out at home. He he thought the catcher was going to throw it the first, the catcher didn't throw it the first and he just ran into the tag, which, okay, I get it. It's easy to just be like, what was he doing? But at the same time, like, it just keeps happening over and over again. They ran a contact play where Friedel got thrown out at home. The infield was in, which it's a contact play. So if you go – if the contact play is on, you can't blame Friedel in that situation. Right. Um, and then Ellie gets thrown out with two outs. Um, he gets picked off at second. That one, I think, bothers me the most because a single is going to score Ellie. So yep. just don't get thrown out at second with a left hand on the mound and Spencer Steer at the plate. But, like, I think the frustrating part to me, and I, I mentioned this on Twitter a couple times, is, like, I think what the, the base running does frustrate me. I will say that. I, I don't think it frustrates me as much as everybody else. And the reason I'll say that is people only bring it up when it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. For instance, Luke Maley stole a base in the Red Sox series. If he would have got thrown out, people would have went nuts. But oh, yeah. he took advantage, and he, he was safe. They didn't even throw it. And that was Mm -hmm. a great, okay, it was a good job because he was aggressive. But if he gets thrown out, people are saying, oh, what's Luke Maley doing trying to steal the (laughs) base, you know? Right. So it's like people don't remember the plays that are good and they only want to bring up. Now I do, I will say, I think they're getting thrown out too much. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's just interesting. But where I want to go with that is like you have, where I was going with that, and I'll let you talk about base running, fielding as a whole, is you have two guys thrown out at home when you're up 3 nothing, 3-2. Then you have... In the in the eighth inning, in the start of that mess, the eighth inning, you have a ground ball hit to Candelario at third base. I think it went down as a single in an air. A good third yeah. baseman probably would have made the play. He yep. he should have just ate it with how bad he is defensively. He's yeah. been amazing for us offensively. He's been awful defensively. Awful. And he threw it so far away from Spencer Steer at first base that the guy got to second. And then yeah. two 58 mile per hour singles happen. And before you know it, it's a tie game. And then they have a guy on third with Devers up the plate and the sack fly happens. But I think, so where I'm going is like all these little things, like the little things are adding up over and over. Mm -hmm. You had a three run lead. You couldn't take advantage to play add on. And then all these little things like the stew sacrifice fly mattered so much because you couldn't get one run in right. Ample opportunities throughout the rest of the game. Yep. Yeah. I think it like, the little things always matter, right? But when you're putting in putting out lineups like tonight's lineup, the little things really matter. Yeah, you know, just like that, they could have been up five nothing, maybe. You know, and to go back to the Friedel, I love, I really like 
being aggressive. I'm with you. I, I want them to be aggressive. Last year, they were probably the best base running team in the majors or top five, at least, you know, but they're <clears throat> the aggressiveness. Like I like the Frito play contact play, but then as a coach to me, if you see the infield in, even with Frito speed, a contact play, isn't the move. Yeah. Take you're going to thrown out 90% of the time. Right. Yeah. You know, um, maybe so, if Ellie's on third base, that's literally right. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I think it's probably both honestly, cause they're probably letting them, you know, they're major league baseball players and they, they know what they're doing. So they're probably giving some freedom, but I think the, there there's a fine line between aggressive and then too and dumb basically yeah, you know right be smart and like you said ellie getting thrown what getting picked off at second we can't get picked off at second right there it's like how a couple times he's gotten thrown out at third for the third out of the inning yeah like no. you're gonna score from second base on a single dude you're right. the fastest <laughs> dude ever you're gonna score <laughs> right yeah. yeah like it's just it, that and i get i'm with you that the base running sure it's frustrating but it's not and it's not that big of a deal to me but when it happens in the situations that it does that it did this weekend that's i mean that is extremely frustrating you know well, yeah and it's just like you said like we talked about like this reds this reds team is not blowing anybody out every game they mm -hmm. win is close so right. it just takes all these little things we're talking about they matter so much because there's a million one run games Right. Um, so it just amplifies everything. If, if it wasn't, if it wasn't happening and the Reds were winning by three runs, like nobody would be talking about it, but everything gets amplified when you lose games yeah. by one over and over again or two or whatever it may be. And you can't score in your offense. Right. And then, and to, uh, you know, defensively, I, Candy's got to go from third base. Uh, he's got to, I mean, First of all, he's had what two or three two error plays. This yeah, year? I, at least two. I think <laughs> it's I mean, bad. When you have like, and then I didn't see the play. He's playing he first again tonight, so I think the Reds kind of see that too. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't I, played third. They haven't stuck him over there at third since uh, the Pittsburgh or the the, the other the Red Sox game we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and I think it, it's like he. I don't know. He makes a mistake, so then he just chucks it. It's like again, little league yeah. type stuff, right? Like but... it seems like a couple times this year he's bobbled it and then picks it up and instead of just eating it, he'll pick yeah. it up and then chuck it over there, and then it's like disaster, right? Like yeah. I don't know. The um, fielding errors to me, you know, I love Ellie and he's amazing and defensively, I think he's great most of the time. But some of the his errors are just. If he goes too fast, basically he's on to the next step and without feeling the ball. Yeah. And, that's and I, I think I can live with Ellie just for the fact that like, he's still, he's still right. so young and like, he just hasn't yeah. been there. So you're going to have those, but like with, with Candelario, like that just is who he is. Like yeah. he's not, you're not improving on defense at age 30, you know, right. you're just not. Yeah. So no. I think those are the ones that like, okay, can we please stop putting him over there? Like, yeah. please. And again, like Ellie, I know we talked about this before, but like Ellie makes plays that make up for his bad plays. Yep. I don't remember seeing like a spectacular play at third base from Jamie no. Canelero uh -uh. all season. Mm -mm. So it's just, again, it, everything gets amplified when you're losing games right. by not a lot. And that's just what's happening at the moment. So, yeah. Anything 100%. else on the, on the Red Sox series? Lodolo struggled for the first time in a while on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, that just felt like one of those games. Sometimes you just have one of those games where you just get beat. The Reds just got beat on Sunday, um, yep. which you wouldn't have a problem with if you won the game on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But you lost a game. You blew a game late. Uh, it was only the second time all season the Reds lost after leading after six innings. And then you lose the Sunday, and you're like, here we go again. Yeah. Do you think, um, do you think that he had his blister before the game? It sounds like it sounds like that he was yeah. dealing with something, which is bizarre. That's, but I know that's what I thought too. And like to me, I guess it just seems weird for them to throw him out there if he did. You know, I yeah, it's just weird. Know. But when guys have blisters, like it feels like blisters linger and linger. So like, right. what do you do? Put them on the IL that's again? True. Like, yeah. If, if he if he can pitch with it, I guess pitch with it. Um, 
I would prefer him pitch with it than go on the IL and not pitch. Right. I don't know. I don't. I don't know enough about how blisters affect yeah. guys to to do it. But yeah, yeah I just found. I just was again thinking just about thing. That. Yeah, just another thing that you find out after the game. You're like, of course, of course, Nick Little has a blister. Right. Right. Just Literally. one thing after another with this team. All right. Well, on to um, Will Benson. Let's talk about Will Benson a little bit. Um, I saw a stat. I saw a stat yesterday. I think it was. It was only Will Benson's second time reaching base since June twelfth, um, which is just in- insane, kind of. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm. I think I'll preface it with this because I don't want to. I never want to crush guys. I never want to. You know, that's the last thing we're trying to do. They're playing baseball. I'm a huge Will Benson fan, but I mean, I I'm to the point. I'm to the point. I don't know. I don't know what to do with Will Benson to be honest because. Yeah. He's been so bad. You're just running him out there and he's doing nothing. But at the same point, like TJ Friedel just got ha- called up and res- respectfully, respectfully, respectfully to Levi Jordan. We just called up Levi Jordan. Like that's where the triple A team is. Blake Dunn was not hitting in triple A, even though he's called up like, and he just went on the IL. He got hit in the head again. Um, Reese Hines, another big prospect, is hitting like 212 in triple A and striking out at like 40% of the time. Uh-huh. You're not calling up a guy who's striking out 40% of the time in triple A. Like, there's nobody to replace Will Benson. So, unless the Reds go make a move, right. I'm not sure there's somebody that I would say I'd rather have that person than Will Benson just trying to figure it out. But at the right. same time, I'm like, I don't know if you're just crushing Will Benson's confidence at this point by just sticking him out there. Yeah. So it's like this weird in-between thing. I have no idea what to do with Will Benson. He's not in the lineup tonight. The Reds are giving him a day off. Hopefully he gets his mind right and figures it out. But, man, he's been frustrating. And it just goes to show, like, not only would you add up all these injuries that we've talked about, and then you have Jake Fraley not hitting, well, only hitting singles. He's, like, batting average. He's hitting well. He doesn't hit for power. Will Benson not hitting at all ever yeah. since – you know, he had an okay, like, late April, mid-May. Um, and it's just, like, everything that could go wrong for this team is going wrong, it seems like. Mm-hmm. And it seems like Candelario and Ellie are just carrying the offense, really. Um, Spencer yeah. Spears been okay at times. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts on the Will Benz situation? Because I, genu- I genuinely, as someone follows the minor leagues, like, unless they make a trade, I have no idea who I would say – Put, give this person a shot for Will Benson because right. I don't think that person is in in the system. Yeah, I mean I, that you're the guy for that. That we you know we text about it and stuff. Who's we've talked about it in the past, like who would replace them, and it's not there. Like, and <clears throat> I'm with you. I'm the same way. Like I love Will Benson, and but man, he's been like he has seven hits and 45 at bats this month. I mean, come on, man. Uh, and that's yeah. with two – that's two two-hit games. Right. So and that was probably the very early of the month. Very it was It was at the, the first 10 days of the month, I think. And yeah. So, I mean, how are – to me, I guess at that point, like you said, he's got – it's got to be confidence at this point. Like, he's just going up – I mean, he's striking out at, like, fit, almost 50% this month. That's – we, you can't keep running almost a on the, yeah there. it's yeah almost on a year he's up to like a 40 something percent strike yeah, yeah it's so like it's crazy but again like you said we don't really have anybody to replace him so it's almost like they really need to go get somebody yeah. you know um especially with the injuries happening that we're happy you know friedel who knows how long he'll actually be out um and, and then it's like at the same time, like, and I know this is what nobody wants to hear, but it's like, okay, you go get somebody. Well, okay, yeah, the Reds are two games out of a playoff spot right now, but like that just because the NL is terrible, you don't think everyone in the NL is going to suck for this bad, like. Right. Um. So it's like, do you do you give up prospects? Right. Is it go worth get it? somebody for a mediocre team? Like, I'm all for it if it's somebody that te- they have team control over for at least mm-hmm. another year. Um, kind of like they did with Bauer a couple years ago, even when they weren't in contention, um, something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a strange thing with Benson. You mentioned confidence and we saw it last year that Benson is a guy that plays with a lot of confidence. I mean, he went down after being terrible at the beginning of the year, he went down in Louisville 
figured it out, got some confidence and came up and literally was one of the best outfielders in baseball the rest of the season. Yeah. And to see him play like this is just, I feel like it's so much, so much to do with confidence. I don't know why he's striking out so much. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I know enough to analyze a guy. Right. Swing. I know Maybe. people have mentioned on Twitter that there's uh, his stance has changed, et cetera. But I, you know, I, I trust that the coaches somewhat know what they're doing, but it's, yeah. It's just a bizarre thing. I don't know that there's an easy, like, this is what you do with Will Benson. And I'll say this. I wish I wish on social media that if you said, send Will Benson to AAA, like if you make statements like that, you mm-hmm. should have to say, here's who the Reds need to bring up when they make that move. Because there's so <laughs> many statements like that. Send this, oh, guy yeah. to, send this guy to AAA. Send him to the Tortugas. And then – they have no idea who's in the minor leagues. No. And if you want to say that's a bigger issue, that's fine. But you have to understand, you can't just make blanket statements of send this guy to yeah. AAA, send this guy to AAA. The Reds have nobody in AAA ready to come up. They just don't. Right. Levi right. Jordan, okay, he was the one guy that was hitting above 300, and he's up now. So it's – I just hate when people just say send them down, make a trade or this. But they, there's no – you can just they don't have they saying. don't have Ellie McLean or CES sitting there ready to come up. Correct. Just, like in that, you know, last year that was that was insane that they had those three guys yeah come up last year, you know, all, all in the same year, and they are immediate impact guys. That's not gonna happen very often at all, you know. So I'm with you. That that's a great point. That yeah, it drives me. It's one of my biggest pet peeves when people just say yeah. Oh, make a trade or send them down, but you don't have to say what it is. You can just make the generic statement and sound smart when it's yeah. like there's nobody, there's nobody to do it. Like anyway, right. that's off that's, my I'll go off my tangent. But yeah, that's well, another but to, thing with like the trade thing too, like on top of is it worth it? It's also who do you get? You know? Right. Because they're not gonna go and get some superstar. They don't they're not. Yeah. They don't need to do that. But at that point is whoever they try to get, is it really going to be that much better? You know? Um, Cause it's what's the team willing to give up. I know? saw something on, I saw something on Twitter the other day. Um, sometimes we call it X. Sometimes we call it Twitter. Yeah. Whatever we want to call it. It's the same thing. Uh, yeah. I saw something the other day. Someone made a great point. I forget who it was. Otherwise I'd give him a shout out. But um, the, the trade deadline is so different nowadays because you have the extra playoff spots. So you have so many more teams in it that yeah, you have probably cool. you have probably 20 buyers and 10 sellers as yeah. opposed to 20 sellers and 10 buyers. That's so very true. let alone in June, like it's a month until the trade deadline. Who's going to who's going to be like, oh, we'll give you our big corner outfielder like nobody, right. especially uh, especially like you said. I mean, the Reds are one and a half, two games out of a playoff spot and they're five games under 500. You know? Right, which tells you a ton of teams are right in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. So it's like it's not it's so different. So then you have twenty teams, you have twenty teams basically going for the guys on the ten teams, and you're going to drive that price up and drive that price up, and it's just mm-hmm. that's it's like why the Reds didn't go get a pitcher last year. They didn't want to give up a ton of prospects, you know. Right. So it's just it's interesting, but yeah, the Will Benson situation. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I love the guy. Um, hope. Me too. Hope he can figure out something because it's just it's tough to watch him go up there and you just have no confidence that he's going to get a hit. Yeah. Um, kind of on the same terms because you know there's just no positivity with this team right now. Clearly, we got no Elvi Marte. Everyone is pumped to bring him back. Um, he's hitting 143 uh, with a 143 on base percentage, 306 OPS in 49 at bats in Triple A, um, seven for 49, one stolen base. Um, he may have a one or two extra base hits, but it's been bad. Here's what I'll say with that. Um, I don't care. You, 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 I bring him up immediately. Um, but again, we're talking about how bad defense has been at third base. Bring him up. He's going to be an instant, instantly better defender. If he's, if he's terrible at hitting, we're not losing anything. No, we're not losing it. We don't have the hitting right now. No, I'd rather have him come up and learn major league pitching and, you know, Triple, just sit him at triple a doing whatever so i'm i'm for the thing you know ellie Marte better be up here for thursday against the cardinals um because if we're, who we're gonna start over him we're gonna start santiago espinal over him against righties like we've seen what espinal does against right-handed pitching all season long 
Right. He's not going to be much better than Marte. With Marte at his worst. So I'm all for getting Marte up here. It's also hard to judge guys in rehab appearances by their stats. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're working on specific things. The team has them doing things. It's basically spring training for him. He's just right. trying to get back into the feel of things. So it looks bad when you just look at it for the stats, but there's way more to it than that. I say, again, I don't care if he doesn't get a hit between now and Thursday. I say get him up to the big league club. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they it it's a no-brainer, like not even a question for me to bring him up or to keep him down. Like I mean, his upside was, just brings so much compared oh, to the guys yeah. you currently have and on the like, roster. And like you said, and I was going to say it is, this is a spring training. I mean, if he was struggling in spring training, would you? Would anybody be saying start him in AAA? No. Right. You know, so. And Luke I, Maley hit like 600 in spring training. <laughs> spring training stats do not matter. And this is spring training, essentially. This is a spring yeah, training. So I, I'm not, I'm not even really that concerned about it. He's just he's starting to figure things out. You know, he's trying to get his groove going and he's, you know, trying to get the mental his, I mean, he was suspended and he's got to get back into the mental state of being a professional baseball player and playing every day. I think he'll be fine. And that, to me, it's, there's no question about it that he comes to the majors. I mean, it, I hope so. I, if, if yeah. the Reds don't bring him up on Thursday, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Um, Same. I mean, realistically he might play the minors don't play on Mondays. Um, so maybe he plays tomorrow. And then if they're going to call him up on Thursday, I doubt they play him on Wednesday. They'd probably fly him to St. Louis, I'm guessing. Um, and then go from there. So it'll be interesting. I guess we'll probably know if he's in the lineup on Wednesday or not, whether he's coming yeah. in, coming up on Thursday would be my guess. Um, but again, I hope, I hope they bring him up. I, I I'm glad it, not much of a conversation there. Cause we're on the same page. Um, yeah, I, I've just, I think for me too, with him, it, it's exciting to have some, another bat that should be pretty decent or could be pretty decent. Come back into the lineup. Um, I mean, I he had three thirteen be... last year when he came right. up in like the last, what, 40 games of the season. Yeah. So like, having a bat like that in the lineup and in the clubhouse is a big thing, especially in the infield where they've, you know, the offense has struggled and his defense is much better than Candelario. So I think um, I'm excited to see him play again and excited for him to come back up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. All right. Well, last thing here, we will preview the pirates. Uh, I promised Paul here I'm going to start out this with um, – I'm going to go over the lineup today. We're going to have some fun. We've had we've been negative. We've been talking about TJ Friedel hurt, Will Benson terrible, no LV Marte can't hit AAA pitching. We're going to have some fun here. I'm going to go over the lineup. Um, I'm going to do my best. I don't know, the famous Bulls announcer. I don't know his name. But that's what we're yeah. going to do. Um, and then we'll go from there. But this is this is quite the lineup. I, I'm, not, I'm not getting a lot of positive vibes over here from the lineup. But here we go. Starting starting <laughs> at second base for your Cincinnati Reds. He once called the Reds America's team. <laughs> Jonathan India in the two hole. He's one of the most electrifying players in all of baseball. He's your starting shortstop, Ellie De La Cruz. Or as Red's Facebook likes to call him, Ellie Cruz. <laughs> Starting at first base. He's one of the hottest hitters on the team at the moment. Jamie the Candyman Candelario. This might take an hour for him. <laughs> in left field. We got Spencer Steer. Batting fifth for the Reds. He's usually starting at catching. He's been going through a mysterious injury that the Reds don't want to talk about. He's DHing tonight. Tyler Stevenson. Batting sixth. Mr. Center fielder. The XAP's favorite player. Stuart Fairchild. Batting seventh. Your third baseman, 
We've complimented his defense all show today. Santiago Espinal. I wish I could do some kind of cool accent for that, but I can't. Right. <laughs> I'm, my voice is getting tired. Batty Nate. He's making his major league debut at 28 years old. He's hit over 300 all year in AAA. Levi Jordan. In rounding out your lineup for the Red Lakes. He's everybody's favorite backup catcher. I just said he hit 600 in triple or in spring training this year. He stole a base against the Red Sox. Luke Maley. And on the mound against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He threw against the Pirates last time out. I have I have a feeling he's gonna throw a gem tonight, Paul. Starting pitcher. Carson Spires. Nailed that. Nailed that. Now you have to talk for about five minutes on your thoughts. And on the your manager, game. David Bell. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's favorite manager, David Bell. Oh, sorry. 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 Everybody, anybody, give us your thoughts on the Pirates. I need to, like, rest my voice because I don't think I'm going to be able to talk the rest Yeah, of the just looking. They're facing Falter again. Um, and just looking at his stats from uh, last week. You know, seven innings, three strikeouts, gave up seven hits. Um, obviously, went quite a ways, you know, seven innings, only 80 pitches. Um, that's crazy. So I kind of expect, you know, theoretically, you would think the Reds will be probably either patient or if Falter's throwing a lot of first pick strikes, attacking him pretty quick. Um, I don't remember exactly his style from last week. I know I watched, but I don't remember, but um, I'm really hoping, you know, to see some, a little bit better pick, plate discipline up there, especially against a left-hander. I know sometimes the Reds have struggled. Um, he's not a big strikeout guy on the year, but um, I would say only 52 I, strikeouts and 79 and a third. So pitch yeah. again, when you have 80 pitches through seven innings, you know, you're pitching yeah, you're a probably not striking out a lot of guys. Right. Um, so, one thing, like, just uh, because of your introduction, awesome introductions, Stevenson is, you know, <laughs> he is kind of going through a weird injury, and I don't really know what's going on, but I, hopefully he gets out of it. Um, but I'm kind of, I don't know. I know we've talked about it, but I really don't know who or what they need to do or if there's anything, but I'm I'm tired of seeing Luke Maley in the lineup. Um, but, hey. He's our backup catcher, so here we are. He has been playing a little better lately. Yeah. I will say that he started out the year horrible, awful. He's been he's been he's been all right lately. He's been what um, you expect from backup catcher. Yeah, um, but with I think the Reds have a pretty good chance tonight. I, I actually was on the same thing um, about Spires. I I think he's going to come out and give them six strong tonight um, and go to the bullpen and win this one, win the first game of this series, hopefully not to lose the next two, um, like the Reds like to s seem to do. But I think that um, probably a fairly low-scoring game. Uh, but I think I'll take the end tonight. I will, I yeah, think Pirates, the Pirates offense isn't that great either. Um, the I actually am feeling a Jamer bomb tonight, a candy bomb. I, I think that – I mean, I want to be surprised. That guy just rakes. Um, yeah, he's been unbelievable in June. Um, yep. He's just been literally him and Ellie. Triple A. Yeah, him and Ellie have been incredible, and they've been. It seems yeah. like every time the Reds score, it's because of those it's two. One of, yeah, it's what it's something that those two are doing. Um, you know, especially lately, these last couple of weeks, both of them have been. I think we talked about it last week with Jamer, but both of them have been making a lot better contact lately. I know Ellie's still kind of striking out something. Um, but just they're making solid contact and that's always great to see, you know, here's a couple, here's a couple Candelario stats for you. His hit safely in 36 of his last 46 since April 29th, hitting 298, uh, 330 slugging and five or 330 on base, 579, uh, slugging over that time with 12 homers, 25 extra base hits, um, and 30 RBIs. 1.016 OPS in June. Um, hitting 333 with a 679 um, slugging in June. I mean, he is literally just – he's literally just tearing the cover off the ball. Um, yeah. 
He's on on pace for on pace for 69 extra base hits, which would be the most by any Red since Nick Castellanos had 73 in 2021. Wow. I mean, he's literally performing to what the Reds were expected. Yep. I know defensively we've given him a hard time, but he was not expected to play a lot of third base for the Reds no. team because that's why they had Marte. And then mm-hmm. the suspension happens, and all of a sudden you're sticking him back at third base, and here right. we are. I like um, with Marte coming back up too, just kind of like tonight, and you know, plug Marte in for Espinal, but having Steer in left field, just that other op, having him back out there like they wanted to at the beginning of the year, and I know they've done that more of these last two weeks um and <clears throat> it's i like it i like i know he's not the greatest defensively out there but he, you got to have him in the lineup and obviously and um that just allows more rotation of guys in the infield you know and giving guys days off when maybe they wouldn't necessarily always have a day off having that extra guy to be able to play out there is really nice um i think you know, Spires tonight, I, I'm, I actually, I really do think he's going to pitch well. And I think what I like about him is he just seems like besides the first inning, pretty much uh, last week, um, he seems pretty, I lo- really liked how he calmed himself down um, after that first inning. I know he gave up a run in the second too, but I think that probably gave him a lot of confidence and just being able to keep his composure and pitch pretty darn well after that. um, I think he's going to do well tonight. Yeah. I'm not judging Spires on his first, on his first. No, He was pitching in literally probably the biggest game of his life. He was facing Paul Skeens in Pittsburgh. (laughs) Like the pirates fans were coming out for that. Like anybody, it's his first start of the year. Like he was already going to, he would have been hyped if he was facing anybody, let alone Paul Skeens. Like it was just, it had to be nerves in the first inning. You'd think. Oh yeah. Um, if he if he comes out and does it again today, I'm not going to blame nerves um, this time. But I I truly think it was it was nerves last time out as he settled down. Um, Agreed. So, it just is what it is. I think you absolutely have to win two or three. Um, you cannot oh, yeah. just keep losing series. Um, I will say the Reds' schedule here for a while gets much easier. It seems like for a mm-hmm. lot, like they've just been playing. Like even the Red Sox, you're like they're not a great team, but they came in of course red hot. Um, yeah. the Brewers, That's the Guardians, been pretty surprising this year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the Brewers were great, are a great team. The Guardians are a great team. They did mm-hmm. lose the, the series to the Pirates, but for a while, you're actually facing a couple series in a row where it's not like amazing teams. Um, yeah. and you have to take advantage of that. You just have to. Take oh, yeah. Advantage. And I think, you know, um, I don't remember what exactly it was, but I think the Reds were our fourth this month in ERA. Um, I think. One of our friends tweeted at, that at you today. Um, and yeah. their pitching has been unbelievable. And to do that, I mean, when your pitching is performing the way it has all year long and it doesn't see any signs of stopping, you got to capitalize on that. I mean, for how many years did the Reds have a solid offense, but then horrible, horrible pitching? pitching. Right. You know, now we have this great, really good pitching staff. You know, we're, criticizing frankie sometimes when maybe he doesn't deserve it just because six innings three runs or something like that yeah Yeah. you know just because we're expecting this six seven innings one zero runs that these other guys are putting out there and that's awesome but we gotta score well i was gonna say part of the reason people are expecting that is because if you don't if you give up three or four runs in six innings this offense is toast yeah yeah yeah, so it's it's like just like we said a million times on the show is everything's magnified when when you're playing in so many close games and your offense is struggling and um, I mean I saw people blaming Nick Martinez in the one nothing game I was like guys we each gave up one run like it's not the bullpen's fault it's not David Bell's fault the offense scored zero runs you it's literally not possible to win a game when you don't score a run yeah. you know but Do you think any- um. What are your th- I, I I know we're not like experts or anything. But what are your thoughts on like hitting coach? Do you think that has anything to do with it? I struggle. I know this is a big topic on Twitter. Right. Um, I I struggle with it. You know, I understand what people are saying. Like these guys are paid money to make people better hitters. Mm-hmm. At the same time, these guys have been hitting all their lives. They've learned. They've learned. You know how to hit they're in the major leagues like now, like you're not usually making 
a ton of adjustments, like mechanical adjustments, once you're in the majors. Um, now you certainly are. You see guys with swing changes oh, yeah. or little things. But, like, my issue with the Reds hitting coach in um, particular, with people saying it's his fault, mm -hmm. is Noel B. Marte came up and hit 300 last year. Matt McLean had one of the best seasons ever for a rookie last year. CES hit 275 last year. So if you're going to come and say it's all his fault, does he not get credit last year? Because right. that's what drives me nuts. You can't yeah. you can't say you can't say he gets no credit when they do good and then give them give them all the crap when it goes bad. I mean, it's kind of what I relate it to is for the last couple of years, people have been all over Derek Johnson saying he's terrible. Yeah. This year we haven't heard one peep about Derek Johnson. Why? Because the pitching staff is pitching well. So I think again, I I would say I don't ultimately know what the hitting what the right. hitting coach is saying. So I have no idea what to, what to judge him by or whatever. Right. Um, but I don't think it's fair to say if you're gonna if you're gonna say he's the reason to blame for this year, that's fine. You can do that. But yeah. you also have to say turn around and say he's the reason those same guys were great last year. Because that if you, you have to give credit when they do good, that, if you give if you 100%. crush them when they do bad. So that Agreed. that's what drives me nuts on that. Is like you can't just you can't just say it's your fault when you do bad, but when it's good, it's the players to do it. Right. And that you know, that's society in general. We do that as as human beings, but I'm with you one thousand percent. I think, you know, uh to Steer was in the running for rookie of the year, you know, like the offense was great last year. And so are we just forgetting about that, you know? And yeah. And we're all here sitting at home and they're there. So we don't really know what they're doing, you know? Right. right. And, but to me a little bit, you know, you think trying to figure out what's wrong with the Reds, what's wrong with the Reds. It's kind of interesting that this year they are struggling without a guy like Joey Votto in the clubhouse talking and stuff like that and like i know it's hard to keep an upbeat positive attitude with um when you're losing games but last year was so fun and the whole year they were it just seemed like the energy was a little different last year and i have no idea for sure you know just my take is the energy is a little different this year i feel like it's just not as upbeat and exciting um but i know that's hard when you're losing games um and not having great success offensively so i think they just need to i don't i don't think it's the hitting coach personally um i mean they call it sophomore slumps for a reason a lot of these right. guys are going through are going right. through you know second year whatever um, 22 to 24 or 5 years old trying to yeah. figure out how to hit and then you have fastballs yeah and then you have other guys again not to crap on anybody but fairchild has never hit right-handed pitching. Espinal's right. never hit right-handed pitching. Like the you, you these guys have ceilings. Yeah. Like Stuart Fairchild is not going to come and be a star and just all of a sudden hit 350 because what the hitting coach said to do. And and to uh, I was going to say this before. I think I'm glad you said that because it reminded me the hitting coach also isn't going to tell Will Benson how to hit right-handers because he can hit right-handers he's good at hit, hitting right-handers he's just struggling a hitting yeah. coach isn't going to change that you yeah. know it, it's not yeah it's it's i totally agree and it's just and i think the other thing that i don't think people realize and i don't i don't i don't ever like telling people like they're they're too casual of a fan or whatever you can be however much fan you want to be like i'm right. i'm probably the psychotic kind that is too much of a fan you know um well, I don't think the ca the the average fan understands how how much offense is down across baseball. Yeah. So, Actually, like, the average OPS is seven hundred two. The average batting average is two forty two. Yeah. People, the old Facebook crowd, if would say if you're hitting two forty, send them down to the Tortugas. That's oh, yeah. the average in Major League Baseball. Like the average mm -hmm. is two forty two, yeah. and I just don't think people people came up with that's that wasn't the case and they'd hit 270 and c2 mm -hmm. you know i just don't think people realize that it's not just the reds like it is down substantially all across baseball right yep so i think just another point that i just don't think people realize like that aren't really paying attention that much 
Yeah, and and uh, and like only really paying attention to the Reds, you know, which is fine. That's great, but you have to compare. You have to compare it, you know. Right, right. You can't just sit in a box and put the Reds in there and say, okay, well, we suck. Everyone on the Reds should be hitting 300. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, no, that's not the case. It is an interesting point. It is interesting to think about, though, about how the offense across baseball is down this year. Like, like you said, substantially. It's, I mean, they're like 21st in offense. Watching this team play, you would think they're like easily one oh, of the yeah. top three worst offenses in the league. Yeah. But there's like 10 offenses legit, like equal to or worse than that. Right. And then, like, I want to say, hold on, let me look real quick. Um, so where do you think they rank? And you might know this. Where do you think they rank and run scored against left-handers? Middle of the road, maybe fifth. They're yeah. fifth against. And I saw that a couple weeks ago or last week. And I'm like, wait, what? Because, yeah. you know, but, is it is it runs scored total or is it runs like per nine innings? Uh, run okay. scored total. Okay, because well, the only reason I ask that is some could be how much lefties you're facing. True, um, great. Which I don't know. Right. Maybe it's more. Maybe it's less. Maybe it's average. Um, but yeah. still, it's every time a left-handed pitcher comes up, that's when you know you have the X crowd uh, irate with the lineup. Um, we're like yeah. tonight. We're like even us. We're like that lineup. Yeah. Yikes! <laughs> so but, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's crazy. Like the Reds offense is very frustrating. Obviously don't, I don't, I think we both agree on that, but I think you kind of have to mediate your expectations a little bit of, okay, maybe we're not the only ones here that are struggling. Absolutely. All right, Paul. Well, I got, I got, I got a couple notes from the old game Reds game notes. We're going to end on some positives. We talked Sweet. a lot of negatives. We're going to end on some positives and then we'll sign off. Uh, we went about, well, almost an hour today. Pretty solid, pretty solid stuff. Will Benson has won 178 straight games in the outfield without an error. Pretty impressive. That is props impressive. to Will Benson. Props nice. to Will Benson. Maybe start hitting, but props to Will Benson. <laughs> TJ Friedel has went 785 straight plate appearances without grounding into a double play. Props to wow. TJ Friedel. Can't stay healthy right now, but hey, he's not grounding into double That's plays. That's actually really impressive. It is pretty good. Alexis Diaz has converted 10 straight save opportunities. Also seems like a miracle. Uh, Sam Mole has went 36 in the third straight innings without allowing a home run. Buck Farmer has went 32 straight innings without allowing a home run, which people would lose their mind if you told them that. Because <laughs> yeah, you talk about a guy who gets hate that doesn't really deserve it. It's oh Buck my Farmer. gosh, man. Um, and then Carson Spires, 31 in the third innings without giving up a home run. So we're just ending the show with some positive yeah. notes there. We Love talked it. a lot of negatives um, today, but Overall, I think great things. We need we need to beat the Pirates. I'm not even worried about the Cardinals series yet. Nope. We're just gonna we need to win one, one series, series, get back on the train, and go from there. Yeah. So with that, everybody, if you've made it this far, like, subscribe, comment, do all the fun stuff. Um, appreciate you as always, Paul. See you later. Go Reds. Yeah.